check! It's English O'Clock! Ang pag-aaral ng English upang madaling matutunan, bakit hindi natin simplihan? Halika! Manood at makinig sa English Teacher ni Juan! Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na to, huwag kang matakot! I made learning English easy for you! Please like, comment, and subscribe! At pakishare mo na rin sa iba para marami pang mga huwan na gaya mo ang matuto. Hello everyone! Familiar ba kayo sa salitang bias? Yan kasi ang focus ng lesson natin ngayon. The target most essential learning competency for this video is Examine Biases for or against made by the author. So, what comes into your mind when we say bias? K-pop idols ba? Presidential candidates? Sinong bias mo? Paano ba nasasabing bias? Kagaya halimbawa ni Miss Jessica Soho, totoo nga kayang bias siya gaya ng sabi ng kampo ng presidential candidate na si Bongbong Marcos. What does the word bias mean? Bias is the tendency of an individual to have a positive or negative tendency or liking towards or against something. Showing bias prevents an individual to approach an issue or matter from neutral point of view. So, when Mike Enriquez says, Walang kinikilingan, walang pinoprotektahan. Serbisyong totoo lamang. Kabaligtara ng bias ang ibig sabihin niya dito. Hindi sila bias dahil wala silang kinakampihan. Bias ka kung mayroon kang mas paborito, mas nagugustuhan o mas pinapaboran. Here is an example of a bias statement. Jenna deserves to be the school valedictorian since she is more intelligent than Jean and because Jenna is my best friend. Showing favorites and expressing preferences are an example of bias. Sa paghuhusga sa kung sino ang matalino sa pagitan ni Jenna at Jane, hindi dapat na maging basihan lang ang klase ng relasyon na meron ka sa kanila. Hindi porke kaibigan mo yung isa, ay siya na ang totoong mahusay at magaling. Ang tunay na dapat pagbasehan ay ang performance nila academically, at kung paano ito nagtatranslate sa grades na nakukuha nila. Sa paraang ito, magiging patas ang iyong paghusga at maiiwasan ang pagiging bias. Now, what is bias in writing? Bias in writing can be defined as a prejudice against something an author is writing about, favoritism for something an author is writing about, an author letting feelings or emotions cloud his or her objectivity concerning something he or she is writing about. How can we tell or recognize biases? Kailan nga ba masasabing may pinapanigan? Recognizing bias Number 1. Look for loaded words. Words that are charged with emotion whether positive or negative, can reveal an author's opinion about his or her topic. In short, emotion can affect one's opinion and we call it emotional bias. Emotional biases stem from impulse or intuition and tend to result from reasoning influenced by feelings. Emotional biases are harder to correct for because they are based on feelings which can be difficult to change. Another way to recognize bias is watch out for stereotypes. If the author labels an entire group, the writing is probably biased. Stereotypes are maintained and reinforced by powerful mental biases that filter out information that contradicts or challenges pre-existing beliefs or attitudes. People are often biased against others outside of their own social group. Examples The biases between races They see black people to be more violent 
and to engage more in crimes than the white people. Saying that people with tattoos are troublemaker and bad people. Saying that politicians are all corrupt. Thinking that people with lighter skin complexion are kinder and more intelligent and more capable than those with darker complexion. All Filipinos working abroad are domestic helpers who can't afford branded items. Notice vague language or generalizations. If the author isn't using specific language, this could be an indicator of bias. Example, biased. Educators do not consider each child's particular learning style when developing lessons. This sentence does not acknowledge the variation within the population of educators implying that all educators are like this. Better, some educators do not consider each child's particular learning style when developing lessons. This sentence acknowledges that there are some educators who do not fall into this category, that all educators are not the same. Number 4. Be on the lookout for one-sided arguments. If the author only presents one side of an argument, his or her writing is probably biased. Biased. My daughter texts constantly, which shows that teenagers use cell phones more than they did in the past. This statement makes an assumption about all teenagers by just basing it on the author's own personal experience. While personal experiences are sometimes helpful, use them as supporting examples rather than the sole basis for assertions. Better. Teenagers' use of cell phones, specifically for texting, has increased 33% in the last two years, according to McDonald 2011. This sentence presents the same assertion but uses specific statistical data to support the idea. Rather than basing this statement on one teenager's behavior, it uses a study that surveyed a larger sample of teenagers. Number 5. Does the author present facts or opinions? Facts are what they are, the truth. But opinions can be based on feelings, emotions, or prejudices, which aren't objective. We should clearly identify facts from opinions. With a lot of information that are presented to us every day, we really have to be careful which to believe or not to believe. To avoid being a victim of false facts or fake news, you should always check the sources. Here are some examples of words that denote bias. Biased words often are full of emotions. Awful, amazing, bad, beautiful, best, better, disgusting, exciting, favorite, frightful, fun, good, great, handsome, horrible, miserable, more, most, smart, stupid, terrible, unbelievable, ugly, very. The following are indicators of biases for you to keep in mind when reading. What is the author's point of view on the issue? What does the author stand to gain? Does the author present the other side of the story? If yes, was the author objective in presenting the other side of the matter? One important skill in critical reading is the ability to distinguish the author's bias and prejudice. When the author is biased on an issue, he or she becomes subjective and presents only one side of the story, thus may lead to false impressions or worse, inaccurate information. An example of bias in writing. When I met with Mayor Abu Bakar, I noticed that he had a graceless, a loaded negatively charged word, appearance. He was unshaven and wearing dirty clothes, one-sided. Notice that the author doesn't tell us why the mayor was dressed this way. 
maybe there was a good reason. He spoke to me about his horrible plan to fix our city's roads. Vague language. What specifically is horrible about it? Anyone who knows the plan will tell you that it will bankrupt our city. Is this a fact or opinion? The author offers no supporting evidence. The plan to fix our roads mostly benefits friends of the mayor. He plans to pay his buddies in the construction business millions of pesos over the next two years. I do not want to insult anyone, but the mayor is of Muslim descent, and we all know what reputation they have in this part of the country. Need I remind you of Abu Sayyaf? This is clearly a stereotype. Scenario number one. You want to watch an upcoming thriller movie and so you read movie reviews online. You came across the blog of the famous movie critic Cameron Panis Jr. He isn't a fan of Vince Diesel, the star of the movie Pandemic Revolution, because of an incident when Vince spilled sauce on Cameron's shoes. Although Cameron enjoyed the movie, he didn't put on a good review and commented that Vince Diesel is a lousy actor who just paraded his muscled body. Note, the critic is biased because he didn't like the actor. Thus, the review is not believable. Scenario number two. Minchin is interested in buying a new smartphone since it will be needed for his online classes. She goes to the all-phone store and inquires about the latest iPhone series. Mr. Barney, the manager, discourages Minchin from buying a phone and stating its limitations and keeps on showing Minchin different models of phones. Minchin finds out that all-phone store does not sell a phone series. Obviously, Mr. Barney is biased against phones he doesn't sell in his store. Writers should write objectively and inclusively to receive respect and trust from readers, as well as to avoid alienating readers. To be objective means to write with curiosity rather than having a preset opinion, and to engage with research rather than presenting a personal preference. Being objective in your writing is a skill that you will develop, just like your academic voice. Though having a passion for your topic makes the writing process easier, it is important not to let it take over your draft. There are a lot of posts on social media nowadays about who's candidate to vote for presidential and local elections. Siyempre, madalas na bias na ang mga posts tungkol doon dahil sa eagerness ng mga tao na makakumbinse ng mga botante na tutulong maipanalo ang kandidato nila. Pero pagdating sa media, Journalists or the press, they can't afford to be biased. Dapat objective sila at reliable. Neutral din ba dapat? News anchor Mr. Atom Araulio on media not being biased but needs to be neutral told that media can't be neutral as well because he said, Truth is never neutral. Ibig sabihin, upang maiwasan ang pagiging biased sa media, dapat doon lang sila sa kung ano ang totoo. Pwede kang hindi maging bias kung papanig ka lang sa kung ano ang totoo. Iwasan ang magpadala sa fake news dahil ang fake news ay tiyak na may kinikilingan. May pinaprotektahan at may halong kasinungalingan. So did you learn something today? Sure ako na hindi ka na nosebleed. If you want more of this video tutorial and learn English in a light speed, Huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at i-turn on ang notification button para updated ka sa mga bagong lessons. Ako ang teacher mo, ang English teacher ni Juan. Class dismissed! See ya!